All right. So welcome to our special episode today in this memorial episode of our podcast of Hands Off, Hands On. We want to dedicate this to celebrating uh, a a former um, member of our AMP community, Phil Tigell, and his life and his legacy. And so we invited some special friends of his to have a conversation together today um, to really think about his life, his legacy as a distinguished professional, but not just as a professional, as a mentor, as a friend, and an inspiration to many. So in our episode today, we're going to hear a little bit more from each of the individuals that we've invited to share their memories, reflection on his journey, uh, his achievements, and definitely the marks that he left on our profession, maybe even specific to AOMPT. So whether you knew Phil personally or professionally, uh, maybe just learning about him the first time, we invite you to join us in this legacy, understanding his influence, finding inspiration and dedication from his spirit and his passion. And I just want to say thank you to our panelists today that um, for sharing their stories and their heartfelt time um, and remembering Phil. So thank you guys for being here. Appreciate it. So I'm going to kick us off with six questions. And I certainly would love to have some just back and forth conversations with you guys hearing more about your interactions with Phil over the years. And we're going to kind of go chronologically. So starting from the beginning. Um, So maybe you can first share some of your first memories that you had of Phil and maybe how he began or how your interactions began with Phil uh, in, in physical therapy. So anyone can kick us off here. So I would probably be the last in line. Um, But I think my, my first memory kind of interacting with Phil was um, interesting. It was, it was probably at AOMPT actually. And I was at the conference and it was just one of those, um, you know, I was maybe like two years out as a new PT going to this conference for the first time. And Phil was just like stuck to my side the whole time of the conference. And I'm like, who is this guy? Other than I knew him a little bit and that he's, he and I both practiced in Tucson. Um, But I think that just that experience of here's this guy that has been involved with the APTA and even AM for such a long time. And to have him be right next to me, explaining things, talking to me about what was happening at the conference and just the bigger broader context of what's going on, I think was emblematic of his whole career. And so this was probably like 2015 or something like that. But I know, um, you know, the other two have experience with Phil going, you know, a lot further back than that. So I'm interested (laughs) to hear kind of those experiences. Bill? Yeah. um, Phil, I go back probably about 30 years or so. Um, I was the um, I was with the academy kind of at the beginning. It was one of the first uh, um, of, the four, of the four original examiners uh, prior to uh, back when Barb Stevens was the exam chair. And Phil, uh, Phil was our uh, rules of Roberts guy. You know, the guy, the guy was, it was, it was so on top of things. He was so smart. I mean, I don't know how you can keep track of all of this kind of stuff, you know, the, you know, I, yeah, I, I, uh, uh, and Phil was always, uh, you know, he, he feels a little younger than I am. Uh, but we, we always, we always end up seeming to, uh, hook up, you know, during the breaks or after, or, you know, he, Phil was always arranging dinners and stuff and, uh, uh, great sense of humor. Um, he was involved in the, uh, in, in a lot of the stuff that was going on in, in Arizona, you know, the, he was a, um, he mentored a lot of people. He um, and he was responsible for a lot of the the, the stuff that uh, later uh, uh, occurred in in as far as the advancement of, uh, of physical therapy, uh, the o- Open Practice Act, and, and things like this. He um, he was on the uh, he was in the House of Delegates, so uh, he always had something. Um, uh, insightful to you know to say when you know and it was it was like when he he you know he, some people can open their mouth and stuff doesn't come out right. Phil was always Phil was always one of these guys that was just a kind of a sage you know when he he make a comment I and mean, it was well thought out. He was a very uh, um, 
organized and well thought out uh, uh, human being. Um, uh, we had some great times together, you know, drank together and, you know, socialized. And, you know, we would sit up late uh, outside like at CSM and some of the other places. And, you know, you know, he'd always have his hard liquor. I was always with the, uh, I had beer. I couldn't keep up with a guy like that, you know, <laughs> but uh, just a just a just a great guy. You know, we, we got closer as you know, as the time. As the years passed, we got closer, you know, and he invited me to a celebration of life. And, and you know, that was that tore me up, you know, but he had, he had told me a year ago that, you know, he was having problems. You know, he had cancer and stuff. And this is before he started to decline. And, um, um, you know, when when I went and saw him uh, at his celebration of life and, you know, one thing that didn't change with him, he was always he was always positive. He was always re- he was always deflecting, um, I would say, deflecting uh, praise on other people. You know, he, he, he was a very selfless guy. And he was always so pro-PT, you know, it was always in just, you know, was, and, and you, you listen to the people that were there that had, had uh, praised him. And it was just amazing the amount of people that were at his at this thing. Anyway, I've said enough. So I love that. Let's say. Colette. Well, like Seth, I met Phil first at my first conference, and it was before the conference at a deli. And I don't even know how he knew I was a physical therapist. And I didn't know he was a physical therapist. And I thought, who is this guy? And, you know, <laughs> and I see him at the conference, and he's attached to me the whole day the whole conference and you know, he invited me to dinner with the group of people that he was arranging and you know it just like brought me in and I wasn't going to go to the business meeting because I was kind of tired and he goes no the business <laughs> meeting is the best part and you know he was really right you know like this is where things happens at a and you know decisions are to be made and he just kind of included me there and we kept in touch and randomly he would call and say hey you know the APTA needs this and I volunteered you so you're it and I mean like how do you volunteer people for these positions always super positive and so so present in everything he did and and every time you're talking to him you just felt like you were the only one and I know he did that with so many people that's what made it so magical and you know, like at the last conference, it was really tough because he wasn't there. Um, and in 15 or 16 years of, you know, hanging out together. And I just looked for people who looked lost. Yeah. And I just put that in my memory, like, you know, people who are new to bring him in, you know. Yeah. It's so inspirational in everything you did. Well, and that just totally resonates to you and Seth's story, but then turn around and have Bill hanging out with him for a while doing the same thing, which is just total authentic connection, right? I mean, in that he took you out, took you to get you under the arm and ling and the wing and just uh, hung out with you. And Bill, if you can hang out with him, you got to drink with him, right? That's, I mean, that's the, sometimes the conference life and uh, he definitely did it well. And so I, I, I truly appreciate your three stories and, and see a lot of similarities already showing in, in the way that um, Phil's life really was, right? Totally professional, connected, willing to take risks and, and, and meet new people. And sometimes we don't get out of our own shell. So I love that. I'd like to take it this a little further and I want to ask you, is there a particular moment that stuck out to you in interactions with him or something that was just really meaningful that you would want to share with the audience? I, I'd say, you know, there was a lot of incidents where, where Phil um, stood out, you know, and it, you know, at the meetings, you know, he was a, you know, he'd bring up stuff that none of us, you know, even thought about. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, in the back of our minds, but, you know, he verbalized a lot of the stuff that we were thinking. And, um, you know, he, he's, he, he was just, um, he was very, in, he was a very inspirational guy. I mean, uh, 
but there was wasn't a single incident that 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 I can name. You know, specifically, there was a lot of incidents. I mean, that that um, uh, I saw him in action. You know, and I w- when I first met him, um, you know, I I didn't know much about him and stuff. You know, we got to um, we got to know each other uh, it, it, probably even more socially. You know, because he would always invite. You know, he always set up these things to to invite different groups of people to to dinner, and um, you know, he just he he was he was a very uh, he had a great sense of humor. You know, and he and I, you know, I found out later in life that that, that I was uh, uh, I was part Jewish, and so that was another thing that he and I had in common. You know, I said I was a member of I was a member of the tribe. You know, and 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 uh, uh, so we got a kick out of. Uh, you know, we would would use Jewish sayings between each other. You know, like Mazel Tov, and you know, I'd call I'd, I'd call them a mensch. You know, and and uh, uh, but uh, you know, it was wasn't just one thing with with Phil as far as my experience with him. You know, um, it was very you know he was very supportive of the organizations that he belonged to, and he he took an active participation. He wasn't somebody that you're going to see sitting on the sidelines. Um, and, and that's, you know, you gotta, you, you gotta admire, you know, a lot of people are very, very bashful getting up and talk, talking. Phil was never bashful. (laughs) I love that. So, so many things like Bill said that just really stuck out to me. Um, but really like two things was his attitude about burnout and physical therapy. And he always said, physical therapists who burn out were never lit. Just so passionate about the profession, you know, all the way throughout his life, really. Um, And one of the last trips he did was in November, he went to India on a trip that was designed for physical therapists, occupational therapists, other healthcare providers. And to see him like in some ways, like work the room, right? But like such deep connection that people in that group just really loved him and appreciated him. And he just worked with everybody to like inspire them in their own area and encourage them. I mean, just at a time where he was really, you know, in some ways physically weakening, but the rest of them was just like still as passionate as ever. Love that. I think, I mean, it's interesting because as sometimes as you get older, I've observed in your career, you get a little more stuck in your ways. And it was interesting to see the opposite almost happen with Phil, where he was constantly trying to push the profession forward. So one of the things he said to me that I remember as I was a, uh, early in my career as a delegate uh, was if you have a motion and it passes because everyone votes for it, it was a bad motion. And that made me think what he, I think what he was saying was it should have been passed a long time ago. And what we really need are people to look into the future and maybe come up with some motions that are maybe a little controversial. Maybe they don't pass the first time or two, but they get people thinking. Uh, so that was something I've kind of mulled over since then. And then during a few conferences, we'd go back and forth about different opinions on um he was just a strong believer in the profession in general and that patients don't get to physical therapy fast enough or that we don't end up seeing a lot of the patients that we can help. And so he, I mean, a lot of his career, especially towards the end, was devoted towards that. And you can see his work there. Uh, But we'd go back and forth about the quality of physical therapy. So I'm kind of a strong believer and it matters the skill that that physical therapist has and the knowledge and he was uh, maybe less convinced of that. He just wanted people to get to PT. So we had a few lively discussions about that. I love that. He would probably like the house this year, you all. Uh, there's a lot of primary care conversations going on and getting getting um, patients into care, obviously a little faster and looking at ways to do that. I was in uh, the house with Phil 
quite a bit. And and just obviously my roles, he was a parliamentarian for Aon for like ever. And by the way, that is not a skill set that most people like to have. Um, but the fact that he had that, I think made him, I always call it a double threat in the house, because if you know how to work the room and you know policy procedures, like he was he was well skilled in terms of how to handle the house, and so uh, I, I loved his lively discussions. I loved his contributions always, and I called him I, again. You, you have to find people in the room who are comfortable poking the bear, and he was comfortable poking the bear, and I appreciated that about him. He would he would definitely um, ask questions, and so I, I hear that again in your stories where you know he's he his passion resonated and you felt it. And so again, Colette's saying, if you, if you were burned out, you were never lit. He was lit all the way till the very end, right? He was very passionate and, and we all benefited for sure. Oh, I want to ask another question if it's okay. I want to hear a little bit more about what do you know that he struggled with or ch- what challenge did he have to overcome um, maybe throughout his career, or maybe a, if something that you're aware of that he would want people to know that this really was something that he was passionate to to serve or to overcome. Maybe he didn't overcome it yet. Um, you know, obviously I, we know um, his some of his end times are very challenging, but he still handled them with great grace. But any other stories that you have about his life and challenges that maybe he overcame that would help our audience get to know him a little better? You know, I don't know if this was a huge challenge, but when I interviewed Phil a little while ago, he talked to me about the beginning of his career and how he started in Tucson at TMC, even though he's a New Yorker. He said he realized that was a mistake of birth, which I thought was a great quote. So he moved out West and ended up in Tucson. And uh, he, he did comment how he felt like he was lucky and that he ended up in Tucson Medical Center down here at a time where there were some other physical therapists who were kind of hungry to learn, but that outside of that kind of the, the maybe connection of with the larger association wasn't as much there. And then, you know, later on, he's commented about how that has kind of become more of a glaring issue. I think you see this nationally where it just, and, and, you know, we could list off a whole lot of problems with the profession, but that's one of them. I think where these local meetings have kind of died out in a lot of instances, we're definitely seeing that in Arizona. And so uh, that was another thing he kind of, you know, that maybe came full circle a little bit in his life. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with you, Seth. I do, I do see that was being one of his major struggles was not really a like a personal struggle. I think his struggle was like the profession as a whole and helping it advance to really become what it should be. And that was so evident. And one of the ways he addressed it was like, you know, at the the local level and the national level and being really involved and being really the ultimate networker and really bringing in other people to help that grow. Um, And, you know, he told me things that he did in Arizona. And I used to always beg him, please, please come out to California. We need you. Um, You know, but, you know, that I think, I don't, I mean, I did see him struggle toward the end of like his time, like when we were, especially in, um, in India, like I had seen him in the summer in August and, I heard about the trip and I realized I'm going to go. And I didn't realize how much weaker he had gotten physically. Um, but like, he just took it in stride. He's like, I know this is what I need to do. I know this is what I need to, you know, how I need to adapt. And then in my mind, like every walking surface in India is made out of high polished marble and he's on crutches. I'm like, you know, like, you know, like, but he was just taking it all in stride because I don't think that was his struggle. I think his struggle was more of like the perspective of the profession and how does he make an impact? And, um, yeah. Love that. 
Um, Phil, the, the, the thing about Phil, Phil, um, I, I don't know if you'd call us a challenge or not, but just the, the way that he was driven. He was a lifelong learner. He was a voracious reader. Um, I, 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 um, I taught with Lori Hartman for about 20 years, and uh, I had a bunch of I invited. This was a, an invite only to Las Vegas, and um, you know I invited Phil, and um, you know he he uh, he he was so excited about being able to to sit down. We had you know Joe Farrell and you know Greg Johnson, these pretty heavy duty uh, people from all over the country that were personal friends, and you know Phil was there. And somebody had mentioned that he he. Um, uh, uh, would attach himself to somebody. And we had one of my fellowship students, Sarah Anderson was there and Phil, Phil kind of hung with her. Uh, and, you know, f when, she, when Sarah found out that Phil had, was, was dying, I mean, it was, it, it, it hit her pretty hard because, you know, the relate, their relationship was kind of a funny relationship, you know, very, uh, you know, it was a very friendly relationship. And I think, you know, I think Sarah at times was intimidated by Phil, you know, uh, but, you know, she was very, you know, she expressed her sadness, you know, when she found out about Phil. And then, you know, I know this is a little veering off a little bit from the, the topic, but one of the things that really impressed me is when I went to his memorial, it actually wasn't, it was a celebration of life. And this is, this mm -hmm. is Phil, this is typical Phil, you know, he was, he was, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to have to celebrate after I'm dead. You know, I want to be able to, you know. <laughs> you want to have the party before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, it was so, it was, it, that was, this is so Phil. He was such a social animal. And then listening to all of these people pay homage to this guy. I mean, the, the, and the amount of the people, I mean, some really heavy duty um, um, uh, people in our field and, and, and that had paid tribute to, to Phil at this, at this thing. I was so impressed. I was kind of blown away that, you know, um, uh, the, the people that he knew, um, and the people who had played the, you know, listened to the stories that people had, had said, um, uh, about him, you know, and I, I, you know, I went out and I talked to him, you know, and he was, he was pretty weak by this time, but he was, you know, he got up from his chair and he gave just a great speech. And he said, you know, this is not a celebration just of my life. It's a celebration of our life, you know, and, and, and it's also a celebration of yours, you know? And I was like, you know, I, I'm going to, I was going to, I'm about ready to cry. I mean, you know, you know, and uh, it was, it was so uh, inspiring to listen to him anyway, that, uh, um, like I said, he's, he, he, he was a lifelong learner. And uh, any way that he could, you know, that he could l learn something new, uh, he was all in. Yeah. And you kind of took us in the direction that I'd love to go next, which is obviously knowing him, having been maybe mentored by or being good colleagues with him. What are the aspects of his mentorship style that really made him so compelling to either follow, listen to, or be mentored by, which made him so memorable? You say social, but what does that mean? What? Why was he so good at that social connection? What was it about him that made it so personable and easy to follow? He he was one of these guys that would sit down with you. He he didn't have to know you very well, but he was he was very inclusive, and he would sit down and and for he had some, kind of a, a a sixth sense about you know when he would talk to people. Uh, and, 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 you know, want to bring them into the, into the fold. And he would meet people that he had never met before. And, and, you know, he would, would sit there and talk with them and stuff and kind of fill them in the, and, and, and with encouragement and, and, you know, give them the low down on things. Um, you know, this is why we're doing this. And, you know, um, and, and, you know, provide some history supply, you know, supply, uh, supply, um, some background on things and, and, you know, and, and get people interested. And he was just, he, he just had a way about him that, that, uh, it, you, you know, made you gravitate toward him, especially if you were a younger, uh, a younger PT. Um, you know, he just had a, this, this, 
this sense about him that that uh, you knew that he was kind of a go-to guy, and uh, so people kind of gravitated toward him. That's great. Yeah, I think we kind of alluded to it a few times. I mean, I think he he had a personality that was very outgoing, and so he would end up reaching out to everyone. I mean, if you're like kind of sitting next to him, he'd start talking to you, which I think, you know, and we didn't talk about this in terms of challenges, but I think, you know, I didn't hear him talk much about this, but I think one maybe challenges, he did, he did have that sort of personality that was, could be abrasive. You know, if you're at a conference and you're, you know, didn't sleep too well the night before and here's Bill talking your ear off. All right. You know, (laughs) So I think, but he just kept going. And I think that was, you know, emblematic again of of his life where he, you know, didn't care too much. He'd just keep on going and do what what Phil did and keep reaching out to people. So that was the personality he had outgoing. He'd always be reaching out and getting people involved. Tenacious, it sounds like, willing to keep doing the hard things and just keep on plugging away, right? So that's awesome. Colette? I think it's because really like deeply you could just sense he cared. He cared about like when he's talking to you, he cares about you as a person and all the other people I've ever spoken to and was around, especially like towards the end of life celebration, people just, they expressed how much that he had encouraged them and just how much like love he really shared for people. But like sometimes he was a little abrasive and, I remember sitting at a conference one time and, and I don't know all the details, but I just remember he, he kind of leaned over and whispered, I'm really proud of you. And like, that was after years of like putting myself out there and doing all this, like he wasn't, he wasn't flowery, you know, in any way, but he just really cared. And I think like emulated as like a physical therapist in general, like we, we care about our patients right? We want to help them do the best they possibly can. And and we pour out into them, like we learn and try to figure out challenging patients. And I think he did that with everybody that he came across. Yeah. Well, and, and, and not just in our world in AOMT, right? Throughout the profession, his years in ABTA and in AOMT, he's a man who is definitely invested and willing to make those connections. And so um, I appreciate I appreciate your insight in that area because finding somebody to follow and, and to sit beside and lead with at times, it takes a certain personality and certainly Phil led a lot of things and was willing to take those charges. And so um, I, I believe he's a leader of our profession in a lot of ways. And obviously with the connections he built, he was effective in doing those things. So I think that's it's what I took away from your stories there. So thank you. Um, I, I want to hear one more thing, and this is a little bit more about the legacy in the future. So what advice or insights um, from Phil that maybe you received are the most valuable for the future professionals that you would want to tell today? What is the one or two things that you felt like you just instilled from your time with Phil that would be worthwhile for our audience to hear? I I don't know if I if he said this specifically, but I think uh, I think it was implied with his behavior, and I think one is is you know dedication to your profession, to share share your knowledge, um, and and make uh, make your lifelong you know a a, a lifelong learning uh, situation, uh, and I guess the last one is just stay say uh, stay humble. Um, he, he, I think Phil lived his life to the fullest. This guy, you know, some people, uh, you know, look at, look at, uh, you know, being healthy and happy and, 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 you know, just dying suddenly. Phil rode hard, um, beat up and slid into home plate with, you know, uh, um, beat up and worn out, but what a, what a life. You know, he did it his way. That's great. And you got to, you can't, you got to admire a guy like that. I mean, you just, uh, you know, the, the celebration of life and stuff. And I, 
I mean, he did it his way and he lived his life to the fullest, going to India when he was terminally ill. I mean, who does this? I mean, this was Phil. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I, I really learned from him was that you have to have the long game approach. You know, like, I think Seth alluded to that as well. Like, okay, if it gets passed on the first round, then it was too late. I mean, right. He would put things out there and he said, he would always say like after, you know, a meeting or something like, we still need to work on this, but it'll, it'll be working towards that now because we brought it up. We've had a conversation. Like he was always looking like not where we want to be right now. But he had a vision, like where things should be, like especially like politically, like you know, in Tucson, like where are we now? Where do we want to be in five years and ten years? You know, they were the first with some of the things that other states in the country really struggled with, but it was because of a long game and a commitment and a perseverance, um, and and also at the same time having on the other balance side, like at the AOMP parties, at some of the APTA parties, he was the first to let loose and have fun, you know, like on the dance floor, you know, making silly pictures in the selfie booths, you know, like at the same time doing these things that were super fun, just like enjoying every single moment of it. Yeah, I think there'd be two things. Um, the one for me that uh, I think seems obvious is to take an active role in your profession um, for multiple reasons. It Not only does it help the profession, but it, it will help fulfill you in terms of your career and satisfaction with you know being able to connect and get involved. And then the other thing is just like we've kind of alluded to, the importance of friendship and making an effort to strengthen your friendships, because I think that's really challenging to do these days. Uh, everyone's kind of connect, you know, disconnected a little bit, although we're all connected through our cell phones and computers. And so he was really, really good at building friendships with people. I mean, he had friendships and people, you know, at his celebration of life that showed up from, you know, all over, all over the country. I think there was a person that came from outside of the U.S. So, I mean, it was just amazing. Yeah. All right, so here's my pop quiz for the day. I always have to have something to throw you a little bit. So one word that describes Phil. Your word for Phil. Passion. I would have to use the word mensch. <laughs> 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 what you got Seth um, I think I'm going to go with excitable yeah I love that I love that so I have to thank you guys for sharing your heartfelt stories with our audience and I hope that they were able to walk away learning a little bit more about a great man that will be deeply missed, um, not just from our organization, but from the profession. And, you know, when you look at your life, you always think about what's your legacy. And I think when you look at the three of you knowing that his legacy will be survived in a way through your passion and the people you connect and hopefully through the audience and others that, um, you know, know him, know him well, I think that we will forever be indebted to Phil's legacy and what he committed his life to serve. And so I hope that others can hear his contributions, his dedication to excellence, even though he might fight about it a little bit, whether the excellence matters or not, Seth, more access or, or excellence. I don't know. It's a debate, right? But what you didn't, what you heard was that it was always PT and that he loved his profession and wanted to make sure the patients had the best type of care. And so um, I just, in our memorial episode, want to say thank you to you all for your time. And I want to just say Phil will be greatly missed. Um, his spirits and contributions will be forevermore, um, will guide and, and um, inspire us. We will miss him doing our parliamentary procedures because nobody knows it like Phil did. Um, 
but we will miss him every aeompt. Uh, it's just the time that we'll, we'll join together and we'll toast to him. But in the meantime, I hope that all of you found a little bit of comfort in knowing that his spirit is still alive and well within all of you. So I'll wrap us up and thank you guys for the listening to the podcast and the hands on hands off episode in which we dedicated some time to just getting to know a little bit more about the man, Phil Tigel, and knowing that he will be greatly missed. Thanks a lot.